Many of us dreamt of fame in our youth, imagining a life of celebrity, designer fashion, and glamour as ideal. But as we mature, we often realize the appeal of ordinary life, free from the challenges celebrities face like invasive paparazzi, scandals, and cancel culture. The celebrity experience hasn't changed much over time. They endure scandals, demanding work, and heavy burdens. For some, the internal struggle becomes unbearable. Today we're going to talk about the tragic case of Pepsi Paloma, a well-known Philippine actress and dancer. She ended her life in her apartment, a shocking decision made shortly after a meal with her lover and brother. What could have made Pepsi Paloma, this beautiful and tragic figure, decide to end her life? Let's dive into her story right from the start. Delia Duena Smith was born on March 11, 1966, to a Filipino mother, Lydia Duenas, and an American father, Kenneth Smith. As the first child in her family, Delia was cherished deeply, even when she later had three siblings. But their happy family life was disrupted when their father unexpectedly left and never returned. In the absence of their father, the children relied heavily on their mother. Lydia, a woman of strong character and immense love for her children, worked tirelessly to provide for them financially and ensure their education. As the eldest, Delia played a significant role in helping her mother and caring for her younger siblings. Delia's entry into the entertainment industry came at the young age of 14. She was spotted by a talent scout named Tita Esther, working for the then big-time talent manager, Ray De La Cruz. The details of how and where Tita Esther discovered Delia remain unclear, but Delia seized the opportunity to become a star. Little did she know that her rise to fame in showbiz would also expose her to its more challenging aspects. In the entertainment industry, having a distinctive stage name can be crucial for marketing and memorable branding. Ray De La Cruz suggested the stage name Scarlet for Delia. But it soon became apparent that the name Scarlet didn't resonate well enough in terms of marketing appeal for both Delia and her management. This led them to reconsider the choice of her stage name. He then recalled the group he had formed, the Soft Drink Beauties. This group included three girls, each adopting a stage name inspired by popular soft drinks. The members were Myra Manibog, Sarcy Emanuel, and Coca-Cola Nicolas. Ray made the decision to add Delia to the group, giving her the stage name Pepsi Paloma. But the soft drink beauties weren't just a typical girl celebrity group. Similar to Delia, the other three members were also born in 1966 and started their careers at a very young age. The problem was that these girls were regarded as adult movie actresses, starring in a number of softcore adult films, although they were underage. Pepsi made her debut in a film titled Brown Emmanuel, co-starring with Myra Manabog. While one might hope it was a conventional film, it was actually not. The movie centered around a marriage proposal and was known for its explicit content. Pepsi even had nude scenes in the film, although the girl was only 15 at the time. In the 1980s, during the peak era of Philippine cinema, it was surprisingly not a major concern to portray young, underage actors and actresses in inappropriate ways. This contributed to the fact that many of those young talents ended up being exploited and seen as sex objects. This reality became undeniable for Pepsi. She appeared in several adult-themed films, including Virgin People in 1984 and Naked Island, also in 1984. 
The image of the soft drink beauties no longer depicted these girls as budding young actresses, but as a bunch of soft adult entertainers. It's truly heartbreaking to realize how the image of these young teenagers were consumed and exploited that way. In 1982, the Philippines was rocked by allegations made by Pepsi Paloma, a rising star at the time. She accused three well-known entertainers, Vic Soto, Joy De Leon, and Richie De Horsey, of sexually assaulting her. She also claimed that her co-star, Guaraguarin, was assaulted next to her. This shocking news quickly garnered widespread attention, with many people seeking confirmation of the story. Pepsi recounted that the incident occurred in June 1982, following their appearance on the comedy show Iskul Bukol. According to Pepsi, the assault took place after the show's taping had concluded. She described a harrowing scene where her blouse was forcibly torn open by the men, who then took turns kissing and touching her. She specifically noted that Vic Soto restrained her hands, making it easier for the others to exploit her. The allegations continued to deepen later that evening. After the assault at the broadcast city, Pepsi Paloma and Guarin were reportedly taken to the Sula Hotel, close to the broadcasting center. In room 210 of the hotel, the girls were allegedly drugged and assaulted again by the same three men. Disturbingly, it was reported that photographs were taken during this assault. This scandal became a major issue when the complaint, filed by the talent managers, reached the then Defense Minister of the Philippines. The accused hosts, however, vehemently denied these allegations, presenting a completely different version of events. In late September 1982, Who magazine published an article that included statements from the accused trio, as well as Vic Soto's brother, Tito Soto. Tito Soto contended that the situation was actually the reverse of what was alleged. He claimed it was not a case of the men taking advantage of the girls, but rather the girls initiating advances towards the men. According to this version, after the taping of the comedy show, Pepsi and Guarin unexpectedly asked the three hosts for souvenir photos of the boys kissing them. They reportedly went to a dressing room where Tito Soto was resting, prepared to receive a massage after a long day of recording. From there, Tito alleged that he observed the girls willingly engaging in kisses with the trio. Amid this controversy, photographs became a crucial piece of evidence. During an interview, Tito described two photographs taken that day. One picture depicted Vic Soto wearing sunglasses, kissing Pepsi. In this photo, Pepsi's hand was around Vic's neck, and her facial expression did not indicate distress. But another photo showed Joey De Leon kissing Pepsi, where the embrace appeared awkward. In this image, Pepsi seemed uncomfortable and appeared to be trying to disengage from Joey's kiss and embrace. Tito Soto noted that at that moment, Pepsi was chewing bubblegum and seemed to want to spit it out first. Tito Soto also challenged the claim that Pepsi's blouse had been torn. He argued that it would have been impossible for such an incident to go unnoticed if she had willingly accompanied the trio to the Sulo Hotel. The crime of this type of sexual assault at the time carried the death penalty in the Philippines. So Tito sought to defend his brother, Vic Soto, in an unusual manner, describing him as physically weak and unable to win an arm wrestling match against a woman, arguing that Vic was too frail to overpower women. While Tito Soto was fervently trying to protect his brother's reputation, Joey De Leon seemed to be taking a different approach. He appeared to be enjoying the media attention, even making a sarcastic gesture towards Pepsi by wearing a specific shirt. In a particularly disturbing claim, he mentioned an encounter with a store clerk who allegedly expressed her wish to have been the one assaulted instead of Pepsi. It seemed that none of these men showed remorse or took the situation seriously. Instead, they pushed Pepsi to tell the truth. 
But realistically, what could a teenage girl do when public opinion favored the perpetrators? Renee Cayetano, the private prosecutor for the case, was ready to take the case to court. But just before it started, Pepsi Paloma disappeared. It seemed as if she had vanished. In reality, she had been taken somewhat like a hostage by Bienvenido Ben Ulo Mendoza, an associate of the Soto and Castello families. Luckily, she was later rescued. Despite Ben Ulo's arrest and confession, there is no record that he was ever charged with any crime connected with the abduction of Pepsi Paloma. But three months after the alleged incident, there was a notable shift in the trio's stance. They admitted wrongdoing and issued a public apology, which was broadcast on live TV and published in the People's Journal on October 13th, 1982. In their statement, they acknowledged an error and expressed a desire to move forward. The controversy surrounding Pepsi didn't end there. Later, Pepsi revealed that Tito Soto had approached her with papers to sign, aiming to drop all charges against the accused. Tito reportedly placed the affidavit of desistance on the table, along with a gun, intimidating the teenage girl. Some reports suggested that Pepsi or her mother signed the affidavit, depending on which news source you read. Following these events, Pepsi left the entertainment industry and went to Makati with her boyfriend, Roy Rustin. Reports about her activities varied, with some claiming that she was involved in drug abuse and underwent an abortion. But it's unclear how such details were known to the public, given the sensationalized nature of media coverage. In 1983, Pepsi decided to return to the entertainment business. Reports suggested that her physical condition was a concern, as she appeared very thin and fragile. Before making any public appearances, she was cared for in a private clinic arranged by her talent manager, Ray De La Cruz. The torment for Pepsi, or Delia, was far from over. Apart from the physical exploitation she endured, she was also subjected to mental exploitation. Upon her return to showbiz, her debut in The Victim was beyond disturbing. The film capitalized on her own traumatic experience as an assault victim, casting her as the main character. Despite the movie's profitability, the ethical implications remain deeply troubling. Unfortunately, no one seemed to check on Delia's mental well-being. She bore the burden of being the financial provider for her family while grappling with the relentless exploitation of the entertainment industry. This went unnoticed until it was too late. Tragically, on May 31st, 1985, Delia was discovered hanging in her apartment closet in Quezon City. The autopsy suggested that she likely took her own life five or six hours before being found. The circumstances were heartbreaking, especially considering that her brother and boyfriend were present at the time. Delia's brother, Zaldi White, informed the police that they had been having dinner with Delia's boyfriend, 25-year-old Jose Sanchez. After a normal and cheerful lunch, Delia excused herself to the bedroom, mentioning she wanted to take a quick nap. Her last message to her loved ones was not to disturb her sleep, after which she locked her door. Concerned that Delia might oversleep, Jose attempted to call her at 3 p.m., but there was no response, leading them to assume she was still asleep. Zaldi then knocked on her door repeatedly, but to no avail. Despite growing unease, they waited and tried again to contact her. Around 6 p.m., Jose and Zaldi realized that something was terribly wrong. They forcefully kicked down the door, and there she was, already cold. Reportedly, a note believed to be written by Delia before she took her own life was found. It simply stated, it's a crazy planet. Alongside the note, Delia's personal diary was discovered. In it, Delia expressed that she understood Pepsi Paloma was not her true self, but a persona she had to maintain and accept. The diary also contained records of Delia's financial transactions. 
The police quickly formulated a theory regarding why the controversial actress took her own life. Delia had to grapple with financial troubles, a lack of significant movie roles, the weight of family responsibilities, and an emotionally distant mother. It was a profoundly lonely and sad existence with no one to offer support. Claims that Delia suffered from depression were disputed by her manager, Babette Quercuera. Babette argued that financial issues were unlikely to be the primary concern, as Delia was earning well. Delia had even adopted a child, despite being underage herself. Furthermore, the assertion of a lack of significant roles was dismissed by Babette, who stated that Delia was fully booked for roles in three movies and numerous dance performances. Tito Soto and three others continued to maintain that the assault allegation was merely a publicity stunt orchestrated by Pepsi Paloma to boost her fame. Tito Soto went on to become the vice mayor of Quezon City in 1988 and served as a senator of the Republic of the Philippines from 1992 to 2016. He also held the position of Senate president from 2016 to 2022. Vic Soto continued his career as an actor and gained recognition as the Philippine box office king. He is the father of Vico Soto, who serves as the mayor of Pasig City. Joy De Leon remained active as an actor and continued to host the noontime show, Eat Bulaga, alongside Vic Soto and Tito Soto. Ricardo Reyes, who played bit roles and was typecast as a sidekick to the Tito, Vic, and Joey trio, passed away in 2015. In 2018, Tito Soto requested the Philippine Inquirer to remove published articles available online mentioning the Pepsi Paloma case, citing damage to his reputation as a senator. Years after the alleged assault case, Ray De La Cruz, Pepsi Paloma's manager, was murdered. In a 2024 interview with Julius Babau, fellow former soft drink beauty Coca Nicolas also refuted the allegations, asserting that the TBJ scandal was all made up by their manager, Ray De La Cruz, and that no such assault actually took place. Indeed, amid the uncertainties and complexities of this case, one undeniable truth remains. A life has been lost, leaving behind a bitter taste of tragedy and loss. The true reason behind Delia's tragic decision to end her life at the tender age of 18 may never be fully understood. However, throughout this account, we've witnessed the multitude of hardships she endured, experiences that no child should ever have to face. Let us all remember Delia and cherish her memory in our hearts. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.